I like to share my first impressions after having had hands-on with the new Tudor Ranger at my local authorized dealer. So shout out OC Tanner, shout out my friend John, who let me film this watch one day on the bracelet with the new T-Fit clasp, as well as the version on the strap with the uh, stainless steel deployant buckle. This watch is a very divisive release in the eyes of watch enthusiasts. I think half of watch enthusiasts really like this release. Yes, finally, we have the Ranger reintroduced into the Tudor lineup. We're not getting another Black Bay. We're not getting Snowflake Hands. We're getting an historically rich design at the right size, at the right price, with the right movement, with the right details for a good field watch. We're getting the watch the Explorer from Rolex used to be all those years ago. There are a lot of people very excited about this release from Tudor, but there are also a lot of people that are very disappointed in this release. You feel that it's boring. You feel Tudor missed the mark here. There are no applied markers like the Explorer. There are no polished bits like the bezel or the center links like you will find on a two-tone Explorer in 36 millimeter. There are watch enthusiasts looking at this and going, you know what, this just does nothing for me. It's too basic. It's not exciting enough. And so in this video, I'd like to talk about this new release, share my impressions, and hopefully some of you watching find this helpful and useful as you consider your next luxury purchase. But before I get into it, I'd like to kind of uh, poke fun at my friend Bruno, who works at this authorized dealer. Him, along with myself and a few other individuals, we are exploring the idea of making a custom tutor or, uh, or having them print a logo on one of their models. They do that from time to time with various groups, if you can get enough people uh, together to do that. And one of the individuals said, hey, what about the Ranger for our custom Tudor watch? And Bruno, hard no. He shut that down quick. No, this is supposed to be special. Uh, he was not having it. And I think he was in that camp initially, having not seen it in person, of this just not being special, being boring, not being a great release. And then literally a day later after his authorized dealer got this in hand and he was able to try it on and take a few pictures. <laughs> and to his credit, he said, hey guys, this would be a great option for our custom tutor. And so I think that illustrates sometimes it takes seeing a watch in person to really understand and get the watch. Sometimes the watch just doesn't look good over renderings or over a website. And it's not until seeing it in person that it really comes to play and it's different where it's unexpected and it's much better than anticipated. And so I think a lot of watch enthusiasts that just don't think this looks great, like Bruno, I think they will come around after seeing it in person, going to their authorized dealer, putting it on wrist and going, dang, this is only $3,000 on a bracelet and it has T-Fit and it has the movement and it has good loom and it doesn't have the ridiculous faux ribbit design of many Black Bay models, I think a lot of watch enthusiasts will really come around to this model as expected over the next coming, you know, two or three years. So I'm a fan, guys. It's not a perfect watch, but it is a very good watch. I think there is a crisp level of execution on the dial on a macro level. Some people are saying this is faux Tina. This is not faux Tina. This has more of a green hue in natural light and in low light very good loom. The dial is simplified. We just have the logo below the 12 and we have the Ranger designation above the six. I like how clean that is. I like that there's some real estate. There is some open space on the dial. And that's one of the reasons why I think putting a logo on this for a custom tutor could be a very cool thing. I like the slight use of red on the running seconds hand. And I like the fact that this watch is predominantly brushed. So we have a brushed bracelet, a brushed case, brushed bevel lines on the case, and then we have a brushed bezel. So there's just a couple areas that have high polish, but it's very muted. And sometimes when a watch has one finish, it can feel a little bit boring, maybe a little bit muted, a little bit toolish. And that's not the case here with the Ranger. This still has some light play. There are reflections coming off of the graining in the brushwork. 
And I think this has a, just a nice feel. You're not going to be yearning for a polished bezel insert if you were to purchase this and wear it on a regular basis. I think Tudor did a great job with the finish. Obviously a great job with the size, how thin this is, how this wears on wrist. This is a very versatile watch in terms of design language. So this would look great on the great bracelet. This would look great on, uh, say, the fabric strap or the textile strap. Or if Rubber B comes out with a fitted rubber strap for this, this would look awesome on a NATO. This would look awesome on a number of different options. Now let's talk about negative elements here. I don't think this needs applied markers like some watch enthusiasts do. I think if you're yearning for something that has applied markers, perhaps the snowflake hands, perhaps a little bit of polish work in the bezel or on the case lines, I think you already have that in the Black Bay 41 and 36. And so this needs to differentiate itself a little bit from that model and really stay true to the Ranger roots that have been around for decades. So I have no problem with the printed loom. I like the green tone. But where it does suffer from, like many Tudor models and like nearly all Rolex models, there is no good anti-reflective treatment. And this watch would be next level. It would be almost perfection in my eyes if we had a nice application of anti-reflective treatment. I think the watch needs it. In my opinion, it is the biggest negative element. They can be forgivable on more of a dressy piece where it's about light play, it's about you know reflections and being dynamic. But on a field watch that's built to be functional, built to be an adventurer's piece, built to be essentially what the Explorer was decades ago, I think this does need the ARC. But let me know what you guys think. Has your view on this Ranger changed? Has this become more appealing to you as you've seen real world pictures and video? Or... Have you been confirmed that this is basic and boring and it's not your cup of tea? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching today. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. What are you going to say? Hey guys, Bruce Williams here. I'm going to give you a review on the new Tudor Ranger. Uh, At a beautiful 39 millimeters <laughs> in-house movement. 316L stainless steel. I'm just. Sapphire crystal is a great value. I'm just going to take the audio that you just talked and use that. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free, dude.